What are channel capacity and code rate in communication systems? And I like to start thinking of this by looking at the binary symmetric channel. And this channel has zeros and ones that can go into the channel and zeros and ones that come out of the channel. And there's a probability, P, that an error will be made. Uh, and so this, in this diagram here, if a zero goes in, probability of P that a one will come out. So this channel is limited to zeros and ones on the input. Now, how do we try to overcome those errors and correct those errors? Uh, and that is typically, for many years, was thought that the way to do that was to reduce the value of P by increasing the transmitting power. And if you increase the transmit power, then the noise will have less of an effect, and so you'll end up with a smaller value of P, and you'll make less errors. But actually, in 1948, with the uh, invention of information theory, a new concept emerged that it said that it was actually possible to completely transmit without any errors at all. Uh, and you didn't need to increase the power. Uh, what you needed to do was change the rate. And so that's what we're getting to here about this code rate. And so here's the definition of capacity, or what it is. Capacity, and this is the channel capacity here, it's the maximum rate that can be transmitted with perfect transmission. So that even though errors happen, you can correct those errors. So what is that rate? And the maximum rate that you can do it while correcting errors. And for this binary symmetric channel, it turns out it's this formula here. So let's just, uh, I'm not going to derive that formula, but let's look at this here and see. Here's a plot of that formula. And let's try to understand what it means and understand what it means to have this code rate. Okay, so here's probability on the horizontal axis. The vertical axis is this capacity. And what it says is if zero errors happen, so if the probability of error is zero, then naturally enough, you get one bit coming out reliably every time you put one bit in. So if P was zero, no errors at all, that makes sense. What if P was one? Well, if P was one, every time a, a bit went in, it would come out in error. If you knew that that was happening, then you could simply invert the received bits that you received, and then you would have your original signal back. And so all of those errors, which actually happened with probability one, all those errors would be recovered. Uh, and so then your capacity is still one. Now, interestingly, let's look at this point. If the probability of error is a half, then the theory tells us that the capacity is zero. What that means is it's no bits can be reliably transmitted at any rate, at any zero rate. And that makes sense, I think, if you think about it, half of them are going to come as ones and half are going to come as zeros, and you've got no basis to correct any of those errors. But what, what about in between? Let's think about in between. So let's say here, for example, it tells us, this curve tells us that even if you had a probability of error, so the actual errors happened at a rate something like this, maybe it's a third or some, some number along here, whichever one we want to look at and examine, so that even though a channel makes errors, it's telling us that there's a certain rate in bits per channel use that we can still get through our channel. So what does that mean? How do we, how do we go about doing that, this, this code rate? Well, let's look at a standard uh, way of grouping things into words. So let's first of all look at putting two bits together in a word. So you've got, uh, these are the input bits in a sequence. So let's consider if we put two of them together, then there's four possible sequences. So I'm going to introduce the concept of distance here now. So the distance, D, is the sum of the squares of the elements in the code word, or in this case, the data word. So we're going to use the word data word for the input data bits and code word for the output. Uh, for, oh, sorry, code word for the bits that we're going to code it into before sending. Okay, so this distance here, the minimum distance between any of these code words is one. Okay, because here, uh, this one here, if, we, if an error happened in one of them, it would look like this other code word. So if an error happened in the second bit of this data word, if, if we'd sent in the data word, then it would come out looking like this, and we wouldn't be able to tell the difference between the, this one with an error and this one without an error. Okay, so this 
the, the, the distance being one, the minimum distance being one. So for this one, the minimum distance equals one. And the rate uh, that we are ascending at would be uh, one bit per time slot. But because the minimum distance is only one, we can't correct any errors. So let's think about a simple code that we could then, what we could do about that. Uh, and therefore we're starting to look at this fraction of a bit per channel use. So this would be one bit per channel use, but we have this problem with errors. So let's look at simple parity check. So in parity check, you add an extra, you use the same bits as the input, uh, and but you add an extra bit at the end to make the number of ones even in the code word. Okay, so in this case here, what we could do is add a coder before the channel where we take our data bits and we convert them into code words, coded bits. And so now what we're getting is the concept of a rate because every time we use, we would need to use the channel three times to send this code word. And we would, if we did that, we would be sending those two bits. So in this case, if we use the channel three times to send that code word, then we would be sending those two bits. And so this is the concept of a rate. So we've now got a rate here, which equals two thirds because we, we use the channel three times to send two bits. And that's this code rate here. Now, why is this? Because this has helped us because now the minimum distance between any of these code words equals two. In this, for this code book that I've shown here, you can see there's these, between these two code words, the, those are the same, that's different, that's different. So there's two bits different between these two code words. And the same for all the other combinations. The minimum distance is two. So now we can tell if an error has happened, if a single error has happened. So we're starting to get the idea of how we correct these errors. For this code book, we can't correct the errors. We could tell if one happens, uh, but we can't correct it. Uh, so what do we, what's another thing we could do? And, and okay, that's a benefit because we've learned that we can find if an error happens, but we've paid a cost is sending at a lower rate. We had to use the channel three times to send the two bits. So this is the concept of rate. So what else could we do? Well, let's say, for example, we use longer code words. Okay, so one type of longer code word uh, would be this one here, for example. So in this case, we've, we're taking three bits of the data and we're going to convert them into four. So up here, we took two and converted into three. Now we take three and convert into four. So what's the advantage that we get from doing this? Well, now our minimum distance, or, well, first of all, our rate, now is gone up. So it's three divided by four. So now we've got a rate of three quarters, whereas over here, it was a rate of only two thirds. So we've, we've improved the rate. Uh, we send, we use the channel four times, but we're sending three bits now. Uh, done, doing it this way though, what I've done here is use the same parity and still the minimum distance is still only two. So the advantage of this code is that it's a higher rate, but we've still got only the same ability to detect errors. We haven't strengthened that. So what's another thing we could do? Again, let's look to this idea of using longer code words. Well, here's another uh, code here where we've got longer code words. In this case, we've got five bits. So we've gone, we're just using two uh, bits from our data and we're gonna convert them into five uh, coded bits. So in this case, our rate now uh, is uh, not looking so good. So our rate is two divided by five, two fifths. So we've paid a penalty of the rate, but now the minimum distance has gone up. So the minimum distance is now three. Between any of these code words here, the minimum distance is three. And so this case, uh, we can actually correct a single error. So if one error happened, uh, we would still know which code word was the closest to the code word that we received. So if we received, instead of this, let's say we received zero, we put this into our binary symmetric channel, but let's say we made an error in the fourth uh, bit. So at the output, let's say we received zero, 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 001. Well, if we were to try to decode that, what we have to do is we have to look in our code book and see which of these code words matches up the closest to the one that was received. So if we received 00001, we look in this code book and it's clear to us 
that this code word is the closest to that one because this code word only differs by one bit from that one that I said that we just received. So we would choose this one at our receiver and we would get the correct, we would then be decoding the correct data. So the, the lower the rate, the more error correction we can put in, error correction capabilities we can put in. So that's an important, uh, important concept. So the minimum distance uh, goes up as, and well, one way to get the minimum distance to go up is to put the rate down. Okay, so this is, it comes to about how we go about designing code books. This is what these three different designs of code books that are trying to help us get to this capacity here. Okay, so we've got rates are a fraction because they are bits per channel use. They're less than one because you can't send it one because errors will happen and you can't recover them. So to get towards the channel capacity, you need to send at a code rate which is less than one. Now the question is, how much of a trade-off can you get away with and what is the best design of these code books? Well, what we can see here is we're still getting errors. If we made two errors here, we wouldn't be able to correct those two errors because it would start looking like another one of the code words being the closest. And I think you can do that experiment for yourself. If you flip two of the bits from a code word, it starts looking closer to one of the other bits. But we're starting to get some, uh, some uh, general rules here and some thought process around this. We've got uh, longer code words, uh, give us an advantage in terms of the minimum distance and smart codebook design. So let's let's look at a more general situation uh, just now for the final uh, part of this. So let's try and look at the additive white Gaussian noise channel. And for this one, we're not considering just limiting ourselves to zeros and ones at the input. So let's say we allowed ourselves any different distribution of uh, of our input bits or our input our input data is a better way to say it. So what do I mean by that? Well, in the additive white Gaussian noise channel, the output is not just a zero and a one. It is the input plus Gaussian noise. So let's look at one example of a code book uh, that's going to work for the additive white Gaussian noise channel. So here we've got a code words, they are binary data. So you've stored your data on a computer in noughts and ones. But the actual code word you are going to send does not need to be zeros and ones. All these, these three examples here that I gave, the code words were made up of zeros and ones. And that's because we had a binary symmetric channel where the input to the channel had to be zeros and ones. But what if we allowed ourselves to have inputs which were not just zeros and ones? So here, for example, the code word, all zeros, of the, the, the um, sorry, the data word, I've got this around the wrong way here, sorry, this is the data word, and this is the code word. Uh, so the data word for all zeros could be mapped to this sequence, C11, C12, up to C1M. So we're taking data words of length N, converting them into code words of length M. And if we allow ourselves to have any values here and ask ourselves what is the best set of code words and what are the best values to use and what's the best values of n and m and the the theory tells us uh, the information theory tells us that the CIIs so each of these elements here if you picked them as IID Gaussian so independent and identically distributed Gaussian from with an average power of your power that you're able to send or your average power that you can transmit with, then if you pick these as IID Gaussian, and if you let N and M go to infinity, so infinitely long block lengths, then in this case, the capacity of this additive white Gaussian noise channel is the, given by this formula here. And so again, as with the binary symmetric channel, it's quite probably quite surprising that you can actually write down a formula that says that even though errors are happening because it's the additive white Gaussian noise is being added to your input, uh, input sequence, so even though you're getting noise added, you can transmit and fully recover all those errors if you transmit at a rate equal to or lower than this rate here. And this is in bits per second. And so this is W is the bandwidth of the channel, uh, log to the base two, again, that's why it's bits, because it's log to the base two. And this is the average power, the noise power spectral density, N naught, and again, the bandwidth. 
And this is the famous Shannon formula for the capacity of an additive white Gaussian noise channel. So the question is, well, this is, uh, this is good in theory, but you've got this uh, obvious problem for practice where the length of the block words has to be infinitely long. We saw the benefit of longer block words before, but this is now infinitely block long block words. So that's one issue about uh, in practice. Um, another, well, one question actually also is, you know, what's intuition behind it being Gaussian? Why are you picking these as Gaussian? Well, actually, it turns out uh, I don't think there is any intuition. Uh, I've uh, often thought about that myself and asked many other people. Uh, it's just that that is the distribution that maximizes the mutual information. Uh, I might make a video on that in the future to give more information and m more insights into mutual information and so on. But unfortunately, there's no intuition I can give you onto why they're Gaussian. But anyway, they are. And if you pick them that way and make them infinitely long, you get this capacity. But as I said, in practice, uh, you need... Uh, how, why don't you do this? Well, one is, even if you could make them infinitely long, you need to be able to decode them. And decoding them would require checking the receive sequence against every single input sequence that was possible to see which one was the closest in distance. And that would be, as the, as the block lengths get longer and longer, that becomes impractical to do uh, in, in, uh, in a finite time frame. So first of all, you'd have to wait for an infinitely long time for your block. And secondly, you then have to process it in receiver with an exhaustive search to search from your receive sequence against matching it up for distance with each of the different possible values that could have possible code words that could have been sent. So that's uh, two reasons why uh, we don't do this in practice. If you're limiting yourself then to a finite block length, maybe we make it long but not infinite, and we make it finite, then it turns out uh, choosing the, 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 the values of these code words randomly is not such a good idea when you have finite block lengths, because it could be that you get two that look like you know, very similar to each other just from the randomness of choosing. Okay, so in practice, you want to have clever code book designs, uh, and here are some examples from before, but you want to have clever code book designs. You would like to use long block lengths, but not too long, because you don't want infinite delay or very long delay, uh, and, and you want to be get, getting the message across and, and decoding it as you go in real time. Uh, and so those are a couple of the trade-offs, but you can get, if you choose it carefully enough, uh, as we, I think the important thing here is you can get you can get a code which gets close to this capacity and as close as it can be to having zero errors. So this again reminds you maximum rate with perfect transmission can be achieved if you send at a low enough rate uh, and given by, and the, and the rate here depends on the power to the noise ratio. Okay, so if you found this video helpful, uh, give it a thumbs up. It helps others to find it. Uh, subscribe to the channel for more videos and check out the webpage in the link below for a full list of videos that are on the channel.